Howdy folks, Nathan Adlin here with the Fastlane Car and I recently had a unique and amazing opportunity to drive two vehicles that are absolutely bonkers nuts. The vehicles are the Champagne T-Rex and the Champagne V13R. Both vehicles are three-wheeled motorcycles, basically. This is the T-Rex. This vehicle actually is a uh, product that has been in production for the last over 20 years. So everything we do, we do is to reduce weight, distribute it in the best way possible to have traction, control, stability, and lightness. It's powered by a BMW straight six motor from a motorcycle. It's got 160 horsepower, 131 foot-pound of torque, which gives it zero to 60 in just under 3.5, uh, three and a half seconds, yeah. And it's a very lightweight vehicle that gives incredible handling. It's like your own personal Formula One for the road. Okay. Just engage and disengage your clutch again. Okay, it's in the road. Okay. So now you're in first gear. We put yourself in neutral. Okay. Okay, keep the clutch engaged. Okay. Press the, the, the start button. Uh, just to, like one second. I'll pull it. Okay. Feel the gas. Leave the clutch engaged. You see how sensitive it is? Very sensitive. So you gotta be, you can Super. go from zero to uh, down the drain, down the ditch pretty easily. Okay. So, and it's not the plan today. No, 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 I don't, I like no, to no. see my kids and yeah, all that, yeah, yeah. so. Yeah, yeah. I trust you my, with my life. <laughs> it's got about a 50-50 weight distribution. And uh, basically it's a machine to carve the road. Um, this wheel corner with 1.3 G lateral force. It's something that is very tough to achieve in a production car. Although it's five inches from the ground and looks like it would need to be a very harsh ride to be able to maintain road uh, uh, adherence, it's not. It, it's a very, very subtle machine, very subtle suspension, and it's a great ride. Yeah, then let it go, you see? Well, you're good after this guy. Uh, I let up too much. Yeah. What do you think? You ready? There you go. Now you may be wondering about helmet laws and the reason why we're riding basically inside of a motorcycle but why we are not wearing helmets. Well, that's because in each state helmet laws are different for three-wheeled vehicles. In some states they say that having an enclosed cockpit means you don't have to wear a helmet and in other states they simply say you don't have to wear a helmet. So before you jump in one of these, make sure at your local Department of Motor Vehicles you're clued into what your state laws are because I'd hate to get you in trouble. So. One of the things you have to think about when you're driving a car like this is the fact that it's not a car. It really is a motorcycle. If you've never ridden a motorcycle, one that has an actual clutch, then you may have a hard time with this. I had a hard time with it and I have ridden motorcycles before. One of the issues is the clutch itself because it comes directly off the sports bike, which means that you're triggering it with your foot, but it really is meant for your hand. You only have a couple inches of travel between engaging and disengaging. And because of that and how high the RPM goes on this sucker, it's kind of difficult, especially from a dead stop going uphill to drive. I stalled it many times, but once you get going, the sequential gearbox allows you to bang into each gear and it is a six speed and it allows you to really, really sing. It doesn't like to go under 8,000 RPM. Let me put it to you that way. And as you're flying through the canyons, you'll notice something. This is a wide vehicle. It's several inches wider than a Corvette C6 because of those outboard wheels. And because of that, you're going to have one wheel right next to the line while the other wheel is taking up an awful lot of space as well. Hell, this thing is almost as wide as a Raptor. Still, as you drive it, it is probably the most direct contact you'll have with the earth when it comes to steering feel. It is completely manual steering. The thing only weighs around 1,100 pounds, although you have to be really brave to drive this thing in traffic because you're sitting super low and you are super exposed. The torque curve of this engine is very, very linear. 
So it's very easy to, to be a good driver. This, will, this product will not surprise you. You will manage the, the, the acceleration. You have electronic control of the, the torque delivery based on road condition if you want to do a sporty ride. If you're in the rainy situations where you have your uh, rear wheel in the back in the rain or in the wet, you don't want to slip around. But if you want to be uh, a little bit more aggressive, you put it in sports mode and you can do one, two, three and slip the, the, the rear wheel in first, second and third gear and have some fun. You did good, man. All right, thanks. Yeah. Sorry about those stalls earlier. No, no, that's, hey, you did good, okay. I tell you. All right, okay. thank you. I, I, know, I know people doing it for the first time. Uh -huh. In the situation we got uphill and all that shit, uh -huh. you did real good. I'll tell you one thing, I heard the engine scream. Yeah, it sounded, yeah. It sounded yeah. really cool. Yeah. yeah, it sounded awesome. You're looking at the V13R, which is a uh, roadster with an attitude. It's a uh, three-wheel car that is powered by a Harley-Davidson motor. It's a liquid-cooled 1250cc motor that gives you 122 horsepower to carry that 1100 pounds of steel. This has been on sale, it's on sale right now, it's been available for the last five years. Okay. The purpose of, of our vehicle is not to, to be our daily driver to go do some errands. It's a vehicle you buy and you use for recreation. What makes this vehicle very different from the T8 Rex obviously is the engine. Driving a V-twin, you would think, is less sophisticated, maybe, or less smooth. And yes, indeed it is. However, it's actually an easier car to drive in traffic. The clutch is a lot more forgiving. It's actually easier to engage. It is a five-speed sequential shift vehicle, but because the clutch comes directly off the motorcycle, it pretty much feels like you're riding a Harley. It still has that play where you're able to go out and let the torque move the vehicle a little bit before you add gas. Now, there isn't a windscreen, so to speak. There is a very small piece of plexiglass that will deflect some of the air, but in reality, you are going to have a lot of wind and bugs and rocks in your face, so be prepared for that. This is a vehicle that's a lot easier just to simply get in and out of a garage. Just like the T-Rex, it does have a reverse gear, and it is able to get up there and cruise nicely at 50, 60, 70 miles per hour. Going through curves and corners, yeah, okay, it, it does bounce a little bit because there's only one tire in the back, but the grip is absolutely outstanding. And driving this thing up and down the coast, oh yeah, I could see you doing that. Unlike the T-Rex, which is really more of a tool for a racetrack, this vehicle is much more about the experience itself, feeling the rumble of the engine, feeling the wind on your face, and if I had hair, feeling the wind go through your hair. It's a belt-driven um, uh, drivetrain with a single-sided uh, swing arm here. You've got a uh, gas motor shock in, in the back uh, and a sequential five-speed gearbox with a reverse gear, obviously. Um, it, they're equipped with um, saddlebags so you can actually put some stuff and go on for a, a weekend trip or something like that or a week and uh, enjoy the road and enjoy the different places you go. Thanks again for watching our video. I apologize for all the sound issues, but when you're driving an open top vehicle like this, it is nearly impossible to hear anything other than wind noise and engine noise. And together, it just sounds like a cyclone. Fortunately, I did have a fantastic time, and I can tell you that these vehicles are real, and they are indeed a lot of fun. Thank you so much for joining me for the Fastlane Car. This is Nathan Adlin. Don't forget to go to tflcar.com for news, views, and real world reviews. I'll see you next time.